Wales and Argentina, game number two. Uh, it's a good one to look forward to, given that the game won. The first game was a draw. 20 points apiece last week. Two pretty evenly matched sides. As I said, it's a bit of a weird one. Wales are at home. Argentina should be at home, given the time of year. But with COVID, they're away. Wales got half their players out with the British and Irish Lions. Uh, it's just a weird time, man. But can't complain when you see Wales taking on Argentina for the second time in two weeks. This is very much a, uh, a bit of good news. We'll go through some of the stats from the last game. Uh, the two lineups, which I'll put in the description as well, and the predictions for this one, you guys can let me know your thoughts. It's a miserable day outside, so it's a good day to stay home. And watch some rugby, to be fair, although this one's on at like 2 in the morning. So I'll probably be watching this tomorrow rather than today, as I record this on a Saturday. It'll be a Sunday for me. Um, Gareth Thomas, Elliot D, and Leon Brown is the front row for Wales. So that's two new props after last week. Uh, Wayne Pivak was asked in the press conference, you know, uh, is this because you thought the scrum didn't do well last week? And he said, no, pretty much they wanted to give um, different guys some minutes. They said Leon Brown kind of always rides the pine and um, they wanted to give him a start. And um, they also wanted um, Nicky Smith, who's played the first two games, to have a bit of a break as well. So Gareth Thomas gets a start as well. Elliot D is still there at hooker. Ben Carter and Will Rollins are still the second row. Um, those guys are forming a bit of a connection, having played three games, I think, on the trot now in the second row together. Ben Carter has kind of been thrust into things in the absence of some of the regular guys. No Adam Beard, no Jake Ball, no Alan Wynne-Jones. So, yeah, it's kind of been an interesting test for him, and he's so far acquitted himself pretty well. Uh, Turnbull, both of them, and Moriarty are 6, 7, and 8. So Moriarty was at 6 last week. He moves to 8 with Aaron Wainwright being injured. Uh, both of them still there at 7, and Turnbull jumps up from the bench, and he's looked uh, pretty busy as well from what we've seen of him. Uh, Thomas Williams swaps places with Kieran Hardy. Jaron Evans, Evans swaps places with uh, Callum Sheedy. So, yeah, it's an especially good chance for Jared Evans because... I think he's the third choice guy at the moment, seemingly, uh, just from, from the, the feeling, I would say, and uh, some of the minutes that we've seen allocated. So it's a good chance for him in a proper, proper test match with a lot on the line uh, to actually give a good crack at it. Um, Jonathan Davis and Nick Tompkins is the 12-13 combo, so Tompkins is up from the bench. Um, for Halaholo, who drops down, Jonathan Davis is captain once again. Uh, Rogers is in for Lane on the left wing, but Lane moves to the right wing. So Jonah Holmes is not in the squad this week. And then uh, Halame Moss, who was man of the match last week, is still there at fullback. Uh, it's good to see Sam Perry's back on the bench as well. Matthew Screech, I don't know a lot about him, but he's going to get his first cap if he comes on. Uh, Basham is still there. As I mentioned, the three back replacements are still there. Uh, Rodri Jones is in on the bench as well. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a... Like, changed lineup without kind of trying to reinvent the wheel. The majority of the changes are guys who played on the bench last week getting a start and guys who played in the starting lineup on the bench for the most part, barring a few changes. Uh, for Argentina, it's more steady. There's no changes in the forward pack, so it's still Titus Chapado, Montoya and Cordella in the front row, Petty and Crema in the second row, and then Matera, Isa and Bruni in the back row. Um, I would have thought maybe Argentina's lineup disruption would have been a bit... Uh, I don't know, a bit more, putting a bit more pressure on Wales' lineup because you got Petty, who's one of the best lineout stealers in the world, against Ben Carter and Will Rollins, who are not the most experienced lock and duo in the world, and yet Wales' lineup was still at 100%. So that'll be an area maybe that they would like to see a bit of improvement. They've certainly got the experience side of things. Uh, Matera, Issa, and Bruni, I thought were a pretty useful back row, though, uh, up against a pretty useful Wales back row as well. Both sides are pretty evenly matched in that department. Um, Bruni, I think, is probably, as I said, probably in the last game that uh, he's kind of the least well-known of the three guys. Um, but he, you know, beat like four defenders, so he was um, he was making good work as well. And Matera, I think, had the most run meters of any of the Argentinian players. Beat all the outside backs and whatnot. So uh, he is he is world class. He can't give that guy too much space because he um, <clears throat> he doesn't take a second invitation. He will just take it. Uh, Cabelli and Sanchez are still 9 and 10. De La Fuente and Chocobares are 12 and 13. So 
Choco Baez is up from the uh, from the bench to start. <clears throat> Remember, that guy's beaten the All Blacks, so he might be young, but uh, he's acquitting himself pretty well at the international level. Uh, had a good impact when he came on last week. <clears throat> that means Moroni switched to the left wing, so Cordero is out of the 23. Del Rhi comes in on the right wing for Carreras, who shifts to fullback, who was there for Malia, obviously, who got the red card last week, so he is not available. So the back three are all different in terms of the, the person and the jersey number are all different, but... Uh, all of those guys were in the squad last week, apart from Delhi, who comes into the 23. Uh, Bosch, Kekena, and Medrano are the same um, front row replacements. Lavanini, Alamalo, still there as well. Escuda comes in for Bertrano as the scrum half replacement. Miotti is still there. And uh, Imoff is there on the bench as well. So not a, not a bad guy to bring off the bench. Juan Imoff, a uh, bit of a veteran, and um, surely will add some punch when he comes on. Uh, the head-to-head -head stuff. So Wales dominated the run meters last week, 405 to 298. Argentina had more kicks from hand, though, and it's something, not a whole lot more. I think it was 36-33. Um, yeah, it's not one that they hugely kicked more than Wales, but it's something we saw a lot in the rugby championship when they played New Zealand and Australia, while well, it was the Tri-Nations, uh, last year. Their kicking game was uh, was something that they executed pretty well and um they're not afraid to play without the ball and rely on their defense to kind of grind you down and then they'll hit you on the counter and with the likes of delhi and um Carreras and whatnot they're um, very capable of doing that goal kicking from both sides was maybe a bit of a letdown in a game that was a draw uh, argentina missed three penalties wales missed two a key one at the end as well so uh, yeah, both sides will be looking to atone for those kind of missed chances last week. Um, some good play from both sides in terms of some good work. Right? De La Fuente was, was busy in the midfield, a whole heap of tackles, Montoya as well. Uh, both of them kind of unsurprisingly was one of the top tacklers for Wales. That's kind of what I know him for. I don't know him that well, but I know he likes to make a few tackles. Uh, but Nicky Smith also made 12, so he's not in the squad. Um, other people will have to kind of step up in his absence. Interestingly, area for Wales to maybe secure up a bit as they lost seven of their own rucks so the argentinian guys were pretty dangerous to break down montoya is one of those guys as well so yeah that'll be an area of focus for them as i mentioned the argentinian lineout wasn't maybe as um they lost one of their own ball and couldn't steal any of the welsh so that may be an area i would like to see them improve a bit um yeah i think that's pretty much it the bookies have got this one pretty much at evens, with Wales being like half a point favourites. So it's, it's a really hard one to call because you've got Wales without all their biggest name players, uh, but they are at home. So who kind of edges it? It is hard to say. Uh, the rugby forecast algorithm has got Wales by 13 points. Remember, that doesn't take into account the teams that are named. So that algorithm doesn't know that all those guys are away with the British and Irish Lions. So um, yeah, it should be an interesting one. As I mentioned, it's a pretty miserable day here, so um, I'm going to go uh, grocery shopping. Yep, that's what you do on a rainy day, and um, there's rugby on at 4 p.m. here. It's currently 9.44 in the morning, so I've got a wee way to go, but then there's lots of rugby on. Tonga and Samoa, New Zealand and Fiji, Wales and Argentina, British and Irish Lions, South Africa A are playing again against the Bulls, so there's all kinds of stuff going on. You guys let me know your thoughts on this one. Who do you see taking it? Do you see this full, more or less full strength Argentinian side getting their way win in Wales? Or do you see this Welsh side full of kind of, I wouldn't say all youth and inexperience, but um, a developing Wales side without the British and Irish Lions. Can you see them pushing through at home? Do you guys have any thoughts? And I will talk to you soon. See you later.